There was one special reason why people loved Catherine, and that was because she always saw the best that was in them. She knew there was good in everyone, no matter how it was dimmed or hidden by the evil wrapped around it. Where other eyes saw only evil temper or wicked spite, she looked beyond until she found some good that she could love. Every day she prayed to God that he would help her see the beauty in each soul, so that she might help it to get rid of the sin that dimmed its beauty. And so, because she looked for good in everyone, all showed her what was best in themselves, and for the very shame would strive to be all she thought them. Catherine had joined the Dominican Sisterhood and wore the white robe and black veil, but she did not live in the convent as the other sisters did. Every morning, when the sun began to gild the towers and roofs of the city, passers-by would see her leave her home and walk up the street towards the church of St. Dominic, where she always went to early Mass. Strangers must have wondered when they saw the men uncover their heads as she passed, as if she had been a queen instead of a poor sister, clad in a coarse white robe and black veil. But if they had caught sight of her face, perhaps they would have understood, for her eyes seemed as if they were looking into heaven, and the holy peace that shone in her smile made men feel that she lived in the very presence of God. One morning as she was going to church as usual, in the first light of dawn, her thoughts far away and her lips moving in prayer, she was startled by the touch of a hand upon her robe and the sound of a voice asking for help. She turned to look and saw a poor man leaning against the wall, haggard and pale, and so weak he could scarcely stand. What dost thou want of me? Catherine asked pitifully. I only ask for a little help for my journey, the poor man said. My home is far from here, and the fever has laid its hand upon me as I worked to provide bread for those I love. So I pray thee, lady. Give me a little money, that I may buy food to strengthen me before I start. I would gladly help thee, answered Catherine most sorrowfully, but I am not a lady, only a poor sister, and I have no money of my own to give. She turned as if to go on, but the eager hand still held her cloak, and the man begged once more. For Christ's sake, help me, for indeed I need thy help most sorely. Then Catherine stood still. She felt she could not leave him so. There was nothing at home she could part with, for that very morning she had given away all the food that was in the house. Her father and mother were good and kind, but she must not give away the things they needed. Sorrowful and perplexed, her hand felt for the rosary which hung at her side, for in every trouble she turned to prayer to her dear Lord. Then, as her fingers touched the beads, she suddenly remembered that there was at least one thing which was her very own a small silver crucifix, which she had had since she was a child, and which she had touched so often as she prayed that it was worn, smooth and thin. Still it was silver, and it would buy the sick man a meal, and quickly she unfastened it from the rosary and put it into his hand. The man's blessings followed her as she went, and though she had parted with the things she loved best, she counted the blessings more precious than the gift. And as she knelt in the dim church after the Mass was over, God sent a heavenly vision to reward his servant. Catherine thought she stood in a great hall, filled with things more beautiful than words can tell. And in the midst stood our blessed Lord, holding in his hand the most beautiful thing of all, a cross of beaten gold, set with jewels of every hue, sparkling so brightly that it almost dazzled Catherine's eyes as she looked. Dost thou see these shining gifts, he asked, and wouldst thou know whence they came? They are the noble deeds which men have done for my sake. And Catherine, kneeling there with her empty hands, could only bow her head and say, Lord, I am only a poor sister, as thou knowest, and have not to give thee. The service I could offer cannot find a place among these glorious gifts. Then it seemed as if Christ smiled upon her, and holding out the golden cross, he asked, Hast thou not seen this cross before, Catherine? No, Lord, she answered, wondering, never before have my eyes beheld anything so lovely. But as she gazed upon it, her heart was filled with a sudden gladness, for in the midst of the gold and jewels, in the heart of the glorious light, she saw the little worn silver crucifix which she had given to the poor man that morning for the love of Christ. And as the vision faded, there rang in her ears the words she knew so well, Insomuch as you did unto the least of these my brethren, ye did it unto me. 
As time went on, the fame of Catherine spread to other towns outside of Siena, and when there were disputes between the great cities of Italy, they would send for her and beg her to act as peacemaker, and she helped them all just as she did her own people of Siena. Even the Pope came to her for advice. In the midst of all this busy life, Catherine fell ill. Her love for Christ was so real and her sorrow for his suffering so great that she prayed that she might bear the pain that he had borne. We do not know how our great Lord granted her request, but in her hands and feet and side appeared the marks of the nails and spear. All her suffering she bore most patiently, but her heart was glad when the end came. The same vision that smiled on her that summer evening when she was a child appeared in the sunset sky again, this time never to fade away, as Catherine, the bride of Christ, was led by the white-robed angels up to the throne of our Lord.